Hi, I'm Elsa Benton and I'm an ice core analytical scientist here at the British Antarctic Survey. I work in the Chemistry and Past Climate programme and we collaborate a lot with people doing radar geophysics studies to identify ice core sites and then we drill and analyse the ice cores um, and bring them back over here to our headquarters in Cambridge for analysis. So ice cores are formed when snow falls down on, on top of the ice cap and that snow traps inside it just pockets of air which are representative of the atmosphere at that particular time. So as we drill down into the ice core we actually get an older and older sample of the precipitation and the air in that atmosphere at that particular time. This is particularly important because this region of Antarctica um, has some of the cleanest, most unpolluted um, precipitation in the planet and that gives us a nice undisturbed background level of the atmospheric measurement. And as we go back over time, we can look at how the precipitation and the weather and the climate have changed. The oldest ice we have in the building here at the moment is from a place called Birkner Island and it's around 20,000 years old. We take our ice core sample and I chop it up into the cold room using a big bandsaw into the pieces that we need for different types of analysis. What I personally do is take one of the pieces and melt it down on a hot plate and it's connected to a series of peristaltic pumps. So once I have my liquid sample, I divide it up into the different chemical channels for analysis. And that ranges from anything as simple as conductivity detection, so how salty the water is, uh, to dust particle counting using a laser particle counter. I measure hydrogen peroxide by fluorescence detection. I do my elemental analysis of the chemical constituents using an inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometer. And I measure the major anions in my chemical sample using a fast ion chromatograph. We actually have a dual channel fast iron chromatograph, so we have two pumps, two columns, two detectors, and that really increases our throughput as much as we possibly can, so that we have one sample every 1.25 minutes. Um, and that equates to about every nine centimetres of, of measurement on the ice core depth scale. And on the fast iron chromatograph, I measure the major anions, chloride, sulphate, nitrate, and also one of the most important measurements we make on that, which is very much scratching around the detection limit at the moment, and that's methane sulfonic acid. So methane sulfonic acid is particularly important because it's our best indicator, we feel, of um, where the sea ice is retreating and you get a large phytoplankton bloom. Um, that produces dimethyl sulfide in the atmosphere, which is oxidized to its uh, more long-lived form, which is methane sulfonic acid, which we can actually measure in ice cores, but it's at very low concentrations, and that's where one of our major challenges is, um, is in um, maintaining the detection limits so that we can measure that at around two parts per trillion. We're very interested in looking at halogen species in particular in the ice cores. Now, they're always a challenge because they're present in such low concentrations. Once we have our annual layer markers and our chemical signals, we can put these together so that we know the age of our ice and how the environment has changed over the past. So it could be that there's been more or less sea ice in recent times, or that the precipitation patterns have changed so that we get less snow in one region as opposed to the same region 100 years ago. We're particularly interested to see how the, the last 50 years of anthropogenic warming fits into a bigger picture and whether indeed the recent warming is significant over a longer time scale and whether it's significant in terms of a spatial scale as well. So then we can get a picture of um, how our seasonal cycles have evolved over the last tens of thousands of years and, and actually we can look at um, hundreds of thousands of years going back to the, the last couple of ice ages. In fact the oldest ice core to date covers eight ice ages. We're also interested in looking at the Eemian period, particularly in Greenland. Now that was the last warm period prior to the last ice age and it's thought that temperatures were about a few degrees higher than they are at present and sea level was a few metres higher than it is at present and it's thought that that could be used as an analogue for future climates so we're particularly interested in that warm period in Greenland so that's why we also look at ice cores from Greenland as well as Antarctica.